Thank you, Patrick, Clarion. It's uh, actually great to uh, see Clarion again. Uh, as he pointed out to me, we've known each other for quite a few years, being cardiologists together. I also want to welcome all of you and particularly seeing some very good friends and familiar faces, Roger Glass, Derek Yuck, and so many others that I feel very much at home. And in fact, the, uh, the forum, uh, so let's say the, Bo the board in global health uh, does a tremendous job under Patrick's leadership. As I'm learning this organization, I, of course, get to hear about what's going on in every part of the institute and the National Academy. And uh, I have to say that in addition to doing some really great in-depth analysis of very difficult issues, um, I can tell you today we're going to do a major release of a report on graduate medical education, which is going to be very controversial, but moving in the right direction. I think the convening power of the IOM and National Academies through this forum, to me, is one of the most innovative things and most effective tools that we can have. Because after all, at the end of the day, you know, I think to attack a problem or to solve a complex problem in this world, we need partnership from every sector. I've learned that in my last several lives. Many of you know I have multiple relationships. But it's, I'm absolutely convinced that it is really through partnership. People bring different skill set, different expertise, different resources, different perspective that can solve a complex problem, uh, such as in healthcare. So this, in fact, forum is very important. And you know, I give you tremendous credit for actually putting this together, because that would be something I would be very interested in. Had I not been a member of uh, the forum, I would say, and not the president, I would say, I'd like to be involved. I think that's how I believe important this is. So uh, as you heard, I just started a few weeks ago, and it's a terrific opportunity for me uh, to, in many ways, look at issues in a much broader fashion than I've done previously, whether it be it within my own you know, research or within an organization that I led, such as Duke, and now, of course, thinking about much global and bigger questions nationally and globally. Uh, so I'm very excited to be here for the inaugural public workshop uh, for the Forum of Public-Private Partnerships for Global Health and Safety. Now, this forum is going to address the following topics, the financing of healthcare, the healthcare delivery models, and occupational health and safety. And today's workshop you're going to be focusing on universal health coverage, occupation, health, and safety of the informal workforce in uh, developing countries. So, you know, when I think about this, when, when it comes to addressing these topics, I think there, to me, two ingredients that are necessary for success, at least these two. There are many others. One is innovation. Because, after all, when you look at the difficulty of things that we face, and the, the traditional way or the conventional way we approach these issues is simply not enough. Particularly if you live in resource, uh, under-resourced countries and areas, you have to have innovation to change the way you do things. Second is a way to be able to implement these innovations. This is where public-private partnerships come in. Because if you look at innovation, I would say that many of you travel the world, I know so many of you, and you see innovations everywhere, in Africa, in India. And, you know, so there are clearly solutions on the ground, you know, and in resource uh, underdeveloped countries, I think the saying about necessity is the mother invention is true. Uh, we see a lot of very creative stuff, which I'll talk about. But these innovators face a lot of problems. From a good idea, they have to go through the idea of how to do a business modeling, how to do financing, how to uh, uh, you know, um, deal with regulatory barriers, and so many others, so that a good idea remains to be quite local and small and can scale replicate easily. This is where I think public-private partnership can make a great difference. By bringing together expertise from the private sector, from the public sector, from academia, from NGOs, you can actually help 
these individuals to scale replicate so that ultimately their ideas can go way beyond uh, you know, the local uh, experiments they do. So I want to spend a minute telling you a little bit about my little experience I have and as a take-up point for today's conference. As Patrick mentioned that uh, uh, when I was involved with the World Economic Forum, I still am, uh, we started an idea of looking at innovations. But very quickly as we look at exploration and innovation, it became quite clear that there are so many barriers of innovation to their healthcare that we actually eventually uh, work with McKinsey and work in a forum to develop those ideas and eventually reform an entity, a really an NGO, a 501c3 called the uh, IPHD or the Partnership for uh, International Partnership for Innovative Health Delivery. And I want to give a shout out to Sarah Gelfand who's here today. She's the deputy director of the institute. We're very happy that she's here. Now, so she's done a great job, and what we really do, as you can see, is to scour the, the world uh, in a way looking as a curator to look at where are the innovative uh, models of care delivery throughout the world, particularly in the South. And as I said, you find a lot more innovation in Africa, in India, in many other places, in South America, etc., where people are finding ways to deliver care at a much low cost uh, with uh, equally good uh, outcomes. And so, in so doing, we, of course, becoming, became an organization that helped these innovators to create a network. And so IPHG is also a skill builder, and it brings together technology and expertise to help these innovators to overcome many of their barriers. So how do we actually get resources to do that? Well, this is where the public-private partnership came in. Because as part of work of the forum, I had the chance to meet all the CEOs of major industry. And in talking to all of them, the point is very clear. Everybody would like to see an expansion of market to the bottom of the pyramid. That being said, uh, there are really no delivery channels. By helping these uh, innovators to expand and successfully develop their delivery models, you will end up with channels of potential channels for their products, which I think is a win-win. It's what I call doing good and doing well. And consequently, we're able to form the IPHD, and IPHD becomes a connector. It connects public-private people together. And we have uh, as many, actually, of the, the forum members, sponsors of our IPHD, that allows them to uh, help each other in terms of expertise, coaching, mentoring, but also the potential partnership. For example, we connected ClickMedic with Medtronic, one of the forum members here, who are now working together to develop a design of an autoscope, which is connected to a smartphone that you can actually look at uh, hearing loss in India, and that, in fact, is now developing into a real product. So I, I want to give you one example, which I think is a, I'll be a small one, because I think you must have much greater thoughts about how PPP can resolve many of the issues that you're going to deliver with. But the one such example through IPIGD is, in fact, One Family Health. One Family Health is a uh, franchise model. It's actually a series of clinics in uh, Africa, and uh, it's a franchise model. It's run by nurses. And the country of Rwanda embraced this opportunity and created a hub-and-spoke mechanism. That is, that the health centers and hospitals of Rwanda, the government, is the hub, and the spokes are these franchise clinics. Franchise clinics are run by nurses who are trained to do handful of conditions which are life-threatening diarrheal disease, respiratory disease, and malaria. And they prescribe in a, you know, very protocol-driven way authentic drugs, which, as you know, is a very important issue in Africa and elsewhere. And in so doing, they're able to serve a lot of people. And it's a win-win because the franchisees make money. They follow very closely the protocol. It's, in fact, the franchise with senior nurses visit each one of the clinic every two weeks. They track, monitor and communicate and 
all the things that happen. And if you don't, in fact, follow the proper way, you know, you're kicked off the franchise. But what we're able to do as IPHD is able to get GSK to the table. GSK has now put in several million dollars as a way to help them develop this franchise model. And EcoBank is pledging microfinance lending to nurses who want to become new franchisees. And they both, GSK and EcoBank, uh, contribute to a fund that continue to train nurses and development. And of course, Rwanda Ministry of Health is providing public government's endorsement support and allows it to join together. So this is an example, I believe, of how one can bring things together. Imagine that as I look at, as I travel to many countries, I think the health systems, uh, you know, state-sponsored are really overrun with work. And you need private sector innovation to bring in new ideas. But these private sector innovators, usually innovators, don't have the ability to expand them. So what you really need is, therefore, the kind of interest that industry and others have to help them get there. So I want to finish by saying, so what, why public-private partnership? I think, first of all, uh, finance. It can create a buffer or bridge that crosses the valley of death for many of the innovators. Support of entrepreneurs to provide do domain-specific knowledge and expertise about management systems and platforms to help them increase their reach. Incentivize industry academia, partnership for sharing of resources, and enabling a policy network or framework to integrate innovation into public health systems. I want to show you a last slide, a talk I gave in India, actually about public-private partnership in the meeting on future of healthcare. And here's what the framework, and I won't have time to go through the, you know, each one. Of course, you know better than I do what, how the different uh, partners can bring to the table. But certainly in my perspective, there's a role for NGOs. It can convene and platform to allow success in supporting and scaling replication of innovations, connecting to grants and funding and supporting innovators. The government, I believe, has to play a very important role because if government's in the way, you will not be able to succeed. The government has to play a role to let innovators come in, to let private sector innovation develop, and to provide ways to support them and not see them as competition but also importantly to create maybe tax incentives and others to help them actually bring more innovation to help solving the problem of healthcare. To incentivize academia to work with, in fact, the um, government and uh, the innovators, and importantly, enabling policies. Frequently, the regulatory issues are so big that if you look at even within each country and across country, if you take a model that can work, from one place to the other, you really need the need for the government to be able to uh, do adaptive regulatory issues. And I'm sure you're going to talk about that. And of course, for business sector, to bring finance and uh, to bring know-how, to bring mentorship, and to build a network. I think the IOM Forum is perfect for such a conversation. You have, you represent all different parts of our uh, partnership. You have the ability to uncover innovative solutions, to build relationships with a network, to measure, evaluate, and learn, and ultimately come up with ideas that can move forward. I also think that I'd like to see these forums more and more develop also to be an incubator. We've been very careful at uh, National Academies to think that we obviously convene. But my own experience is convening is good, and a lot of ideas is good, at some point, like my own experience with IPIXD, you want to actually see action. And how do you actually take from there out to action? There's got to be an in-between space where, in fact, we can help people germinate these ideas, create the plan, and then launch it outside the forum and IOM. So uh, I feel that this forum has tremendous potential of making a huge difference. And I want to thank you very much for joining it, putting our time into it, and then for listening to me and giving me an opportunity to at least share my ideas with you. Thank you very much.